Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Zakhla khair for your question. Uh, it's a very important question where we are looking at what's the difference between the different recitations of the Quran and and those are known as the huruf and the qira'ah and the rasm that Uthman gathered everyone on. Now there is a large and a huge amount of confusion surrounding you know, the different events that have taken place. Now let's go to the huruf. Uh, it's been narrated in Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet wasallam said, Akra'ani Jibreel ala harf. Jibreel used to come and he used to teach me the Quran on one style of reciting the Quran only. فَلَمْ أَزِلْ أَسْتَزِيدُهُ حَتَّى انْتَهَا إِلَى سَبَتِ أحرف. I continued to ask for a different way and then he gave me a different way with the permission of Allah. And then another way, and then another way, until it ended up at seven. And this is in conformance with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Qiyamah, لَا تُحَرِّكْ بِهِ لِسَانَكَ لِتَعْجَلَ بِهِ إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا جَمْعَهُ وَقُرْآنًا we, we will gather the Qur'an for you, meaning with the tafsir of some of the ulama, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase you in the different ways of reciting the Qur'an. So don't hasten. When Jibreel comes out and he gives you a new way of reciting, don't hasten, don't hasten so that you can you know, memorize it quickly. Take your time, learn it, and Allah will give you another one. It's not going to escape you. And an example of a different way of reciting the Qur'an, there's many different ayat in the Qur'an, whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, in, uh, in Surah Al-Fatiha, Maliki Yawm din and in some is Maliki Yawm din And sometimes the word is completely different. So Allah says, uh, for example, إِذَا جَاءَكُمْ فَاسِكُمْ بِنَبْنِ فَتَبَيَّنُوا Umar radiallahu anh heard from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَثْبُتُوا Similar wording in meaning, but it's a completely different word that is being used to recite the Qur'an. Now the ulama have said that there are different words and different uh, pronunciations and different harakat. Sometimes it becomes fatah, sometimes it becomes kasra, sometimes it becomes a, sometimes it becomes u, sometimes it becomes e. And all of that, if we can trace it back to the Prophet wasallam, then that becomes a style of reciting the Qur'an which is affirmed. Now the ulama have said that there are seven ways of reciting the Qur'an as we find in the hadith that we mentioned earlier. And all of these go back to the Prophet Sallallahu and all of them are mutawatir. What's mutawatir? Mutawatir is when a large number of people have narrated from another large number of people and all of those people that are in that chain from the, the first group, it's impossible that they've gathered upon a lie because they're so pious, they're trustworthy, we know who they are, we know that they've, they're free from sin, they're free from shirk, etc. And they've narrated to another group of people who satisfy those same Criterion until the chain goes back to the Prophet. That's what is mutawatir. Also, what is from the condition of the mutawatir, as the ulama have mentioned, is that that large group have narrated from another large group, ala tariq til his, that is done in a way that we know that they actually met and narrated the Quran from one another. And this is important, and this is a benefit that we all need to pay attention to is that the Quran cannot be learned by you opening the Quran and reading it for yourself. And the Qur'an cannot be learned by you listening to the recitation of the Qur'an. The Qur'an can only be learned when a person has an interaction where he has learned it from his teacher. That happens in madrasa, etc. But as long as that connection goes on and a person, and this is why ijazat was very important at one stage, a license to teach the Qur'an, because the ulama have said that that level of chain of carrying on going back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has to be done at a tariqah to his as in it has to be done in an actual interaction between one and another party and we can understand this in the day that we live in now is that a large number of people can narrate from another large number of people and they've never even been there they've never even seen what's happening but you know that it's happening because of the fact that it gets spread and because viral and social media and on phones and different platforms, even though you perhaps you find you find a narration or news that comes to you from a different country and you've never been to that country. But the ulama said that that's not mutawatir in the sense of the Quran being narrated. So this is very important that mutawatir is even stricter than the things that we see as being certain and ilm and qat'i as in you know certain knowledge that we can see on our mobile phones 
the ulama have said that if a person narrates Quran to another person and he's not done it in a manner where he's physically actually interacting with that person, then he will not be accepted. It shows you how strict they are. Even though the fact that this is something that we rely on in you know transmitting information without actually there being an actual interaction in the manner that we live in the world today. So this is the Qur'an, and the, this is the different ahruf. Now, there is some khilaf between the ulama on whether the fact that is the harf the same as the qira'ah? As in, is the qira'ah one thing and is the harf another thing? Now, some of the ulama have said that the harf is one thing and the qira'ah is something else. And this has been narrated by uh, Mujahid and others from the companions. However, what seems to be the correct opinion, as we see in the hadith earlier, is that, and Allah knows best, that the harf and the qira'ah is the same thing. And there are seven different narrations, which are, like I said, all mutawatir, which we talked about earlier, and all of them go back to the Prophet Wasallam. And these are seven well-known schools of reciting the Qur'an, which are all mutawatir. Nafi', Ibn Kathir, Asim, Hamza, Kisai, Abu Amr, and Abdullah ibn Amr. These are the seven. And did I mention Hafs? Hafs, uh, Hafs and Asim. Yani Hafs and, and Asim. Yeah. So then that's the seven. These are the seven narrations of the Qur'an and they are all mutawatir and they are all preserved. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that this is how he's going to preserve his religion. Inna nahnu nazalna ilayka dhikr wa inna lahu lahafidun. We have revealed the Qur'an to you and we are the ones that will preserve it in its chain, in its men, in its recitation, in its ijazah in, and it will continue like that until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifts the Qur'an towards the end of time. Therefore, the Qur'an can be traced back to the Prophet ﷺ, to Jibreel, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is harf, this is qira'ah, and it differs to rasam. What's rasam? Rasam are the different dialects that people have when they speak a language. It's the colloquial language, which is not the formal language. And this exists until today. So in uh, Kuwait, they don't say ka, they say cha. So instead of saying kam hadha, they will say cham hadha. Meaning, how much is this? In uh, Egypt, they won't say jim, they'll say ghim, salat al fagr, not salat al fajr. And these are dialects, and like I said, these are all colloquial. And with that colloquialism, you can have adding, you can have taking away, you can have different pronunciation, you can have different words for different plurals. So you can have salat and salawat, you can have different pausing and starts. And this is known as al-wasl and fasl. So you would stop at the ayah and start at a different ayah according to the dialect that you are, uh, you know, that you are part of. And this is something that happens in languages here. So the dialect of the people in London is different to the dialect of the people of Sydney, which is de- different to the dialect of the people of Scotland. The dialects differ. And when Uthman found that Islam was spreading, dialects obviously were part of the issue. So what he said is that what we need to do is we need to remove all of these dialects and return them back to a Qurayshi uh, Qurayshi uh, dialect and record the Qur'an based on that. So what he did is he burnt them all and he gathered the Qur'an upon the uh, the the, uh, the Qurayshi dialect. So all of what we see from the seven different ways of reciting the Qur'an, the pronunciation of those words, the way uh, they continue on from one another, the plurality of those words. So now you can have salat and salawat, or you can have uh, sometimes, for example, ya ayyuhal ladhina, ya ayyuhal, sometimes there was a yayil, yayil, as in the, the first hamza would be removed. Uh, an example they gave is tabu and tabut, tabu, the tabut is sometimes not pronounced, and sometimes it is tabu and tabut. So that there's a different examples that, you know the ulama gave of different rusum, you know different dialects and different ways that people used to uh, pronounce those words. Based on that, when he saw that there was this difference that was occurring in the ummah, he put a stop to it and he said that those seven, 
return back to the dialect of the Quraysh. So however the Quraysh used to recite the Qur'an according to their dialect, that's how we will do it, in conformance to the seven that go back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Does that make sense? So now, if we have tabu and tabut linguistically, a person can say tabu and tabu. Linguistically, a person can say salat and sal- uh, salat, salat and salawat. Uh, and different examples where the hamza would be removed, etc. Uh, then in that scenario, a person would look at the harf and then look at the rasam. The rasam is the dialect. And if the harf has that in its harf, as in this can be traced back to the Prophet, we'll preserve that. But if the rasam, if a person's reciting and it's not according to the harf and not according to the way that the Quraysh have their language, the formal language of the Arabic language, then we will remove that colloquialism and we'll go back to the formal way of pronouncing it. So it's bringing formality to the religion uh, and, and the Quran, sorry, bringing formality to the Quran. Now with this, the ulama have said that he burnt it and then anything after that uh, was then negated. Now, there's a khilaf that comes after this, which is that, does that mean all of the other rusum and the all other dialects, does it mean that we cannot use them anymore? Or does it mean that we can use those dialects still? Have they died out? This is the question. Have they died out? Or are they still much, very much still there? Now, as long as language exists, as long as the study of language exists, as long as the study of Qur'an exists, rusum will always remain. Like we've said, I mean, different dialects still have different ways of saying things according to every single language. Therefore, the rasam is never going to disappear. With that, the majority of the ulama have said that the rasam can be used in order for us to uh, understand the meaning of the Qur'an, to understand um, uh, the tafsir of the Qur'an, to understand the different semantics that the Qur'an uses if there is a reason for us to do so. But this, again, the ulama have said, that it goes back to the people of expertise. It's not just for anybody to do that. Some of the ulama have said, now this is the issue here, is what Uthman did, is that tawqifi or not? Meaning, is that part of legislation or not? Did he do it from his own ishtihad or is it part of sunnah that goes back to the religion? Because Prophet ﷺ said, "Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnat khulafa rashidin wa mahdiin min ba'di." So whatever Uthman or Dinar and does, that becomes part of his sunnah and is also part of an extension of the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Therefore, some of the ulama and you will find this as an opinion from Ibn Taymiyyah, and there's a fatwa from the Jazdaima. They've said the same thing, where they've said that what Uthman did is tawqifi, which basically means that any kind of rasm that comes after it is not permissible and it's been abrogated until the day of judgment. And the Rasam, which is Qurayshi, the dialect that we recite from the Qur'an. So now, basically, whenever you recite the Qur'an, even from its different ways of reciting it, all of it is within the formality of the way that the people of Quraysh used to speak. But if there is something that is being used, which is not from the Qurayshi dialect, that is then abrogated and not permissible. And that's the view of some of the ulama. Where the majority have said, no, it remains as part of uh, you know, the discipline of the Qur'an and Arabic language and usul al-tafsir and those kind of things if there is a benefit for a person to have them. So now when we learn that, when we know that, we can then see that rasam has never really gone away and it'll never go away. So even when we burnt the, the masahif, etc., that had an opposite or different rasam to the rasam of the Quraysh, it can still then be revived because a person can still see that tabu and tabu, uh, tabut is different. Ya yul and ya ayyuhal is different where the hamza is removed. Salat and salawat. Sometimes you can have salat as the plural and salawat as the plural. Uh, so, uh, you know, they will, they, it can be revived. So, in the sense that it doesn't always necessarily go away. However, the last thing that we'll mention here is that the ulema, and this is the reason why the legend of Daima have gone with the opinion that they've gone with, and Ibn Taymiyyah, and I think this is the strong opinion, which is that even though. Before Uthman burnt the Masahif, there were different Sahifas. Or, you know, now each companion, or a lot of the companions, used to have their own copy of the Qur'an. So you have to remember, at that time, the Qur'an wasn't readily available. It wasn't printed. 
what a person has memorized for himself, they used to write that down and include it in what they had in their own mushaf so that they have the Quran preserved for themselves in their own quarters, private quarters. They used to have aspects of tafsir in there. Uh, and that that sahifa and that mushaf that they used to have for themselves was according to their own ishtihad also. So give you an example, Ibn Masood didn't have falak al-nas in his. He used to believe that falak al-nas were from the adhkar and they were not from the, the maw'id the tain, were from adhkar and they were not from the Qur'an. So his last surah was qul Allah wahad. This is the opinion of Ibn Masood So up until the point where Uthman made six master copies of the Qur'an, the Qur'an was written in an informal manner from the companions themselves in the sense that it wasn't something that they all had agreed on. As in, this was my own Musaf and you got your Musaf and in your Musaf you've got some notes on the side and in your Musaf you've got some tafsir, etc. And this is well known that they used to have different sahifas. When Uthman gathered a shura and in that shura he had many of the senior companions, Ubay, Zaid, uh, Abdullah bin Zubair, Abdullah bin Harith, uh, Sa'id bin As, and, and others, uh, they all then agreed that what Uthman is doing is correct. And nobody conflicted. And this is the point of evidence from Ibn Taymiyyah and others from the ulama, which is that what Uthman did abrogates, his sunnah now has abrogated all the different rusum that have come before. And he has now put it down as sub'ati ahruf, Upon the Qurayshi dialect And that is a matter of ijma And when you've got a matter of ijma You cannot conflict that ijma So now you cannot come up with another harf There are more than seven huruf That go back to the Prophet Sallam But the ulama have said that the ones that are uh, Not mutawatir They are shad and they are weak in themselves So it only remains at seven Based on the hadith uh, And based on the fact that uh, They're not mutawatir so there are more than one recitation. So now, any kind of uh, recitation of the Qur'an which are not from the seven are rejected. And any kind of rasam dialect that is used, which is not Qurayshi dialect, will be rejected. Why? Because of the fact that Uthman had gathered the Qur'an upon these seven with the Qurayshi dialect. His is a sunnah and there is ijma of the companions at that time. Okay? But the majority, like we've said, have said that just because he did that, it doesn't necessarily mean that there was ijma, because other companions still had different musahif, and they held different of opinions, and they uh, didn't see what Uthman did as being an act of sunnah, which is legislative sunnah, so to speak. So there is this is the khilaf between the ulama. But to answer your question, what seems to be the stronger view is that what Uthman did was to combine all of those seven different ways of reciting the Qur'an upon the Qurayshi way of saying it, the dialect of the, the, the Arabic language from the Qurayshi, which conforms with the seven that go back to the Prophet ﷺ, with those strict conditions of mutawatir uh, being in place, that becomes legislative as it being the, the, the preservation of the Qur'an until your Qiyamah. As for any other harf, or any other rasm, any other way of reciting the Qur'an, style of reciting the Qur'an, or any other dialect, then that is not permissible for a person to contradict, especially the fact that there is ijma from the companions, except if it is for the purpose of a person uh, needing to benefit and learn from the Qur'an, but not attributing that as to the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, you can use it for tafsir, you can use it for linguistic purposes, you can use it for understanding usul and foundations of Qur'an and, and, and the way that the Qur'an is understood, etc. But you cannot say that this is Qur'an, any other rasm or any other harf. This is a summary of something which is a very extensive topic. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a firm understanding and he, that he shows us the best way in the dunya and akhirah, and that he allows us to benefit from the Qur'an before it is taken, and that he makes us of the Qur'an in the people, in the dunya, and the akhirah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.